Citizens speak out. People in Afghanistan, Bahrain, Egypt, Iran, Libya, Pakistan, Russia, Syria, and Yemen continue to stand up for the right to freely express their views and opinions while calling for government reforms that give every citizen a chance to be heard. Following reports that North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, airstrikes on Afghan civilian residents had caused 100 deaths this past week, Afghan President Hamid Karzai ordered an end to all airstrikes. Speaking with regret for the loss of innocent lives, U.S. Presidential Spokesperson Jay Carney stated that the nation would continue working with NATO and Afghan officials to reduce citizen casualties. On Tuesday, May the 31st, Russian police in Moscow and St. Petersburg arrested 76 people for their participation in what the official said were unauthorized protests as the activists called for the government to respect the right to freedom of assembly and free elections. The body of Pakistani journalist Syed Salim Shahzad was found Tuesday showing signs of torture. Prior to his death, he was known to have received threats from the nation's security forces after publishing an article linking the country's military to an illegally armed group. Iranian minority party activist and women's rights campaigner Hala Sahabi died Tuesday after she had been temporarily released from jail to attend the funeral of her father, veteran dissident and former politician Ezatollah Sahabi. Witnesses report that she was among other mourners holding a picture of her father when a scuffle broke out with Iranian security personnel and she fell to the ground. The U.S. State Department has demanded that the Iranian government investigate her death. As a 10-week emergency law was lifted in Bahrain Wednesday, several citizens reported that they had been forced to make in order to secure their freedom. Among them were several medical personnel, France 24 correspondent Nazia Saeed, and a female teacher who told Reuters that she was threatened with gang rape to force her to sign papers vowing good behavior. Meanwhile, activists said that the government was still using violence to stop protests, with one reporting to Agence France Press that people in villages around the capital Manama were being attacked as they tried to gather. In a visit to Libya, Italian Foreign Minister Franco Frattini stated Tuesday that leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi must leave his office and the country. Meanwhile, a boat carrying nearly 1,000 migrants fleeing the conflict in Libya arrived in Sicily, Italy. Also on Tuesday, Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki urged reforms from the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, whose resignation has been called for repeatedly by the citizens. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton on Tuesday expressed concern over reports of the Egyptian military cracking down on the media and other members of society, saying that this is not in keeping with the pro-democracy movement. She also called upon leaders to ensure that all legal trials, including that of former President Hosni Mubarak, follow due process and procedures. According to a report in The Guardian, a weekend ceasefire with the Yemeni government, called by the prominent Hashid tribe, was shattered Tuesday, when government forces attacked the home of leader Sheikh Sadiq al Amar during a tribal mediation meeting, killing several other sheikhs. In clashes that followed, an estimated 40 people were killed on Wednesday in the capital city, Sana'a. At least three more citizens died on Tuesday in Taiz, where 50 had perished in a brutal government crackdown since Sunday. Meanwhile, violence continues in Zinjibar, with residents besieged as the government attacks an armed group that recently took control. With deep sorrow for the loss of human lives and the struggles of the people, we pray for a ceasing of turmoil in every nation, and that all citizens may choose to live in peaceful dignity and shared freedom.